Hello and welcome to today's video. Today's video is 31 Days of Halloween, Day 17, Witch's Cauldron. So I've got my supplies ready and I'm going to start things off by taking my foil and sculpting it into the shape of the cauldron. Now I want to pack this foil nice and tight. I want it to be nice and solid and I want it to be smooth. So I pushed it against my desk and rolled it a little bit. Now I'm taking some black Primo clay and then I'm going to mix it with some Primo silver to give it a little bit of a metallic look. I want it to look metal but very dark. So once I get this mixed up, I can smooth it out and shape it into just a flat circle and apply it over my cauldron and cut off my excess. And then I'm going to go ahead and take some more and make three little legs. I was thinking of those bathtubs out of their claw feet. And that's kind of the look I was going for. Now I'm going to do the rim of the cauldron. So I'm going to roll out some more of the black silver mixture. And then I want to smooth in where they meet. And then I'm going to take my ball tool and smooth it on the inside so it looks like it's all one piece with that rim. There's no gaps there. Now I'm going to go ahead and add some toes to those feet and get those attached and smoothed in on the bottom. Now I'm going to go over the whole cauldron and use my larger ball tool to add a texture to it. Now with the cauldron done, I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands before I move to my next colors. Now I'm going to mix up some green and some translucent and some yellow and translucent and then swirl all those together for my witch's brew. So I want to get it nice and thick and I want to put cut out a circle of that and put it into the cauldron. And the reason why I want it thick is I want to be able to put items coming out of it. So once I have that in place, I'm going to go ahead and add some texture to it with the ball tool. And then I want to have a little bit of it like splashing out of it. So I'm adding that and smoothing it in with my ball tool again. And then I'm going to go ahead and do a little spot where it spilled out onto the floor. So the next thing I want to do is do a couple little like bubbles. So I want one bubble to be like formed and then another spot where the bubble popped. And so I'm just doing an indention with my ball tool and then adding some texture around it so like it's the whole thing is swirling around. So the next thing we're going to do is make a tentacle out of this purple clay. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands again so I don't have any of that green yellow translucent mixture on them. And then I'll start sculpting out my tentacle. And if you saw here to the right I did bring out some wire. I'm going to use the wire to support the things I'm putting into the witch's brew. This tentacle is going to have more upright and I didn't want it to droop while it's baking and that way that wire will give it a little bit of support. Now that my purple clay is nice and soft, I went ahead and shaped out my tentacle and then I want to just shape it a little bit. Now I'm going to take a little of the purple clay and mix it with the translucent clay and I'm going to use this for my suction, little suction cups on the tentacle. So I'm just going to mix that together, get it nice and soft. And then I'm going to cut off a bunch of little pieces of it. And then I'll roll those into balls and push them up against the tentacle. I'm going to start off a little bit too big on that end there. That end's really thin. So I kind of put them on alternating a little bit. I didn't want to do a straight row, but I didn't have enough room to do them too wide. Um, so I'm just going to alternate them some once I get them all filled in on there. I will take a small ball tool and do the indentions on them. So get these all placed. I'm just going to go through each one, add a small indention on it so it looks like a little suction cup. And then this leftover clay I'll just put away and use it for a blob or something later. Now I'm going to make a spot for my tentacle. I want to put it by that spot that splashed out like that tentacle came up, caused the Witch's brew to splash out. Put a small wire in there and then just push it into place. And then I want to take my ball tool and go around the witch's brew around the tentacle so it kind of has like a 
a wave pattern around it. And then I just want to add a little bit of the yellow and green translucent mix and have some pieces hanging off of it like there's still, still some of the witch's rue dripping off of the tentacle. I thought if it came up out of it, there's going to be some residue left on it. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to go ahead and wash my hands again. And I'm going to get some white, yellow, and a little bit of the translucent and mix it together and make a bone to have coming out of the witch's brew. I went ahead and moved my little spot of the witch's brew that was on the wax paper that's supposed to be spilled out on the floor. I moved that onto the pan for baking so that way I didn't accidentally smoosh it or, you know, ruin it. So I'm just cutting off a little piece I'm taking my needle tool to shape it. Just kind of a generic, like, dog bone type look. And I went ahead and cut it at an angle because I want it to be angular sticking in there where the tentacle went straight up. I want this to be going in at an angle. Do the same thing with the wire. Then I'm going to use my ball tool to make a spot for that bone to rest in there. And then I'll go ahead and take my ball tool and add a little bit of a ripple effect around there. And then I want to add a little more of the witch's brew around the bone. I want it to look like the bone is sinking into it. Where the tentacle came out, the bone is maybe just placed right in there. Now I'll just use my ball tool to finish up some of the textures. And once I'm happy with that, I can move on and do the next piece. So first I'm going to wash my hands again because I don't want any color transfer. Now I'm going to take a little bit of black clay and I want to make a bat wing like she threw a, a bat into her witch's brew. So I'm just cutting out one little wing, add a little bit of texture to it. And then I want to take a spot there and I want to just draw kind of like a line and indention there. And then push that wing in there and do the same thing where I add a little bit of texture around it to add, you know, like it's flowing around that wing. So that wing gives it, you know, some resistance to the, the witch's brew and it kind of shapes and ripples around it. All right, well, I think I'm pretty much happy with this. So I'm going to go ahead and bake it according to package instructions. And then once it's cooled down, I'm going to go ahead and start glossing it. So I'm just mixing up my Sculpey gloss. And I'm going to start off with putting some on that part that dripped off. And then I'm going to add it to the Witch's Brew. Get it nice and thick on there. I want it to be, you know, not necessarily goopy, but I don't want it to be thin. I want it to look very wet. And I'm also doing the tentacle, but I'm not doing the bat wing or the bone. And that gives more of the illusion that that tentacle like popped out of there and the other two pieces were you know thrown in there recently. So the last thing I want to do is take my smaller brush and put some gloss on that and go into the more of the crevices where I couldn't reach with that bigger brush and finish gloss coating it. And one of the things I'm doing with a smaller brush besides just going in to those crevices I couldn't reach with the big brush is I'm going over everything and kind of evening out that gloss coat. So I don't want it to be, to be too thick anywhere. And I had a little bit of an issue where it was too thick on the suckers, the little suction cups on the tentacles. So I'm basically going in and smoothing that out so it doesn't lose the definition of the tentacles. And I want to make sure it's completely covered on there. It's a little tricky when you're doing something and it has all these turns and crevices. You just want to make sure you don't miss anything. All right, well, I think I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to go ahead and let it dry overnight. And then we'll look at the finished Witch's Cauldron. And here is the finished Witch's Cauldron. I really had a lot of fun doing this piece. And this is definitely one where I have all these ideas of things to do for it. I thought it was, you know, it was a fun touch to have this extra little piece here that splashed out. You can see how nice and shiny it is, shiny it is with the gloss. We'll take a closer look at the texture on the cauldron. I was really happy with how that metal looked. And we'll take a look inside there. You can see this tentacle here with the little drips of the bat wing and the bone sticking out. You can see that one bubble that's popped right there. You know, I think it'd be fun to do different ones of these. You could have, you know, 
little animals in them or an eyeball just kind of all these you know creepy things that a witch would throw into her witch's brew all right well i hope you enjoyed today's video and remember i do have playlists down below for all of my 31 days of halloween so far and thanks for watching and remember never stop creating bye if you'd like a piece of your Halloween artwork featured in my final 31 Days of Halloween video, please hashtag Andrews 31 Days of Halloween 2019 on Instagram or email it to me at andrewschmettclaycreations at gmail.com. I will put this information down in the description box below so you don't have to copy it off of the screen. Uh, deadline for submissions is October 26th and one submission per artist.